This is PC Spiele Tips and Tricks with episode 2 of the Power Start video series in Desert Order. The first part of this little video series showed the first 30 minutes in the game. I now have 5 bases. It is a race against time. What I cannot achieve today will be much more difficult tomorrow. More bases require more energy. I also can reconstruct the power plants for only one gold per level. I still produce these special offer lunchias in my home base. But they are needed urgently in the center of the map. Their distance is long. It always happens that my groups get attacked on their way. Especially near that bridge. The river bases that I conquered are attacked frequently, but they are able to defend themselves. Often I don't even pay attention to such attacks. These bases add more flex continuously. I collected two groups of lunchias in the center of the map and will now send these against the first opponent. Five flex level 1 are not a big hurdle of course. But such fights always cause a significant number of lost units on my side. In the end, the only important fact is that I added one more base very fast. This strengthens my position in the center of the map. I immediately build a new APC in that new base as I want to continue quickly. Most attacks on my bases are of the type nonsense. What does a player expect who sends three willies against a base which obviously is not a new player base? My videos have the intention to avoid such nonsense and to enable players to use their possibilities more efficiently. This attacker must have been very sure that his willies would destroy my six flags, as he also sent an APC. I still get attacked. I still get attacked by other units when sending my units across the map. I don't waste time on such battles, even if my units have the clear majority. I urgently need my lunchers in the center of the map to conquer more bases. As I need to expect to run into more and more other ground units, and as my lunchers are really bad in fighting against these, I build a little group of malts. It will be their task to take care of possible attackers. The home base ended with the production queue of 50 lunchers anyway. Now no more cheap lunchers are coming and as I cannot get the same discount in normal bases, I prefer to build breeders there instead of lunchers. Due to production times my progress got a bit slower now. All these many new player bases around me can only be attacked by me after a new player conquered them. Time to think about how to get more resources to support my growth. Each new base initially requires a lot of resources. Continuously producing more military units also requires a lot of resources. Soon my normal production will no longer be able to produce enough. Some players believe that the production is growing as the number of production facilities is growing. Seeing that I always use the base extension bringing all factories to the maximum level could even strengthen that assumption. But the production is only growing very slow as with each new base the efficiency of all bases is reduced. The result is that my currently six bases only produce a bit more than twice as much as initially my home base alone, as the efficiency has been reduced to 41%. There is the possibility to invest 49 gold for immediate resources, which is 30 million concrete, steel and aluminium each. If the last purchase of gold was less than two weeks ago, 
This will even be multiplied by three. My last purchase of gold is long ago. I used the special Easter offer, granting a 40% bonus. So I buy another 1000 gold plus bonus for 999 euros. I am paying from my bank account and a couple of seconds later, I can use the additional amount of gold in the game. There always is a discussion in the community if it is worth to spend money on some pixels in a computer game. That is absolutely nonsense. Nobody wants to buy some pixels in a computer game and due to the terms and conditions, you will not own something after using gold. You only release a virtual feature in the game. It is important to make that absolutely clear. You pay for a service, for having fun. If I take my wife to the cinema to watch a movie for underground train, tickets, drinks and popcorn, we easily spend 40 euros having some three hours of entertainment. In this game, 10 euros can help to have a lot of fun during several weeks. In return, Studio Hoppe provides developers, designers, support and high performance servers with an outstanding availability. This is the only acceptable point of view and in case you cannot share this, you should stay with games which don't require to spare a single penny. Desert Order definitely is not such a game. This also reduces the number of players with a positive effect that those who play have an excellent performance which is required in such a real-time strategy game. With 90 million extra resources each, I can ref up. Taking a look on the costs for more flex, you will notice that these are really big numbers. You get a base having two flex. Then I start to build one more flag manually and add a building queue for another 10 flags. This requires 5,170,000 concrete plus 517,000 steel and aluminium each. When I add to the maximum of 30 flags later, this requires another 72,250,000 concrete. I only use this maximum for bases directly exposed to the opponent. I have three river bases. And now I have a lot of resources. I use this opportunity immediately. Therefore I build one AMS and two flowers. The required military points are not a problem as I already own enough bases to build many military centrals. There still is the building time, but that early on a new map this fleet should be extremely powerful. You even could improve this by using the half build time feature, but I didn't do that. In my neighborhood, a player defeated the base of another player, but his APC still didn't arrive. I don't want to waste my breeders fighting his lunches. Also, this is a great opportunity to demonstrate one of the basic strategic concepts of this game. I used an armored tank. In this example, it is a T26 and sent it to the opponent's lunchias. These cannot hurt my T26 much. Behind the tank, I have my malts. If opponent units shoot, the malts have two times the range. The tank only receives very little damage as it is armored. The malts don't receive damage at all as they stay outside of the Lancia's range. This way, all Lancia's can be destroyed quickly without losing a single unit on my side. Now, things are developing very fast. Right above that newly conquered base, another player conquered a base and now is adding more flex. Now it is important to attack very fast before more flex would cause more losses on my side. While the battle is ongoing, I build an APC. The malls in the background also shoot on these flags with nearly no effect. It only looks very impressive. The task of the malls is to destroy possible disturbers and they are great against ground units. My breeders and lunchiers destroy the last flag before the next flag is completed. I now have eight bases and I am developing a strong position in the center of the map. 
The last two bases were airports. These are the first two airports on this map. And now I own both of them. Time is passing by. I'm already playing for two hours now. Will I be able to become the dominant player of this map? See this and more in the next episodes of this little Power Start video series in Desert Order. You better subscribe and you will no longer miss new videos.